Yeah, let me see here. Ah, yes. Carry, the act of one wrestler guiding a typically less experienced performer through a match. It also refers to a match or angle in which a particularly skilled performer is able to make an inferior wrestler look good or is perceived to be doing all the work. There have been examples of this throughout WWE history with several great performers elevating their opponents way beyond expectations, often as they both shared their biggest stage. With an honorable mention to Bailey versus Nia Jax, I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture, and these are the 10 greatest carry jobs in WWE history. Number 10, Shawn Michaels versus Vince McMahon. Of all these semi-regular non-wrestlers, Vince was one of the very best, but Shawn elevated McMahon's usual feisty display way beyond his traditional template. McMahon still took the kicking he is usually prescribed at major shows, but the pair incorporated a host of hilarious and physically taxing devices along the way. Supported by powerful weapon shots, including a man taking a framed edition of his recent Muscle and Fitness magazine cover to the head and brutally measured shots with a ladder, HBK faced the brawl mwah, immaculately. Number nine, Chris Jericho versus China. The ninth wonder of the world had developed a passable but clumsy style for her matches with male opponents, but Jericho cleaned the entire presentation up better than any of her previous opponents had done. In positioning her as his equal or better, he finally proved himself as a worthy addition to the stacked roster by giving China her best ever singles match by a country mile. The reward of his first singles title reign was as much for his real life efforts as it was his predetermined victory. Number eight, Shawn Michaels versus Psycho Sid. Shawn Michaels once referred to Psycho Sid as the company's most expensive piece of luggage during a particularly bitter stint on commentary at December 1996's In Your House It's Time. Just a month earlier, the showstopper dragged Sid to his best ever match in front of a rabid Madison Square Garden crowd that had completely turned on his boyhood dream, white meat babyface persona. Michaels losing a title in the ring was a collector's item in itself, let alone in a match that made Sid look like a genuine threat to his WWE kingdom. Wrestling around Sid's limitations, Michaels brought uncharacteristic pace out of his opponent and added much needed spark to an unusually gripping, mission heavy middle sequence all played out in front of a nuclear crowd it was a masterclass from a wrestling auteur in his prime number seven ravishing rick rude versus the ultimate warrior before hulk hogan and randy savage redefined what could be achieved in an ultimate warrior match ravishing rick rude was the gold standard for quality contests with the maniacal superstar summerslam 89's opening sequence saw a rerun of the typical warrior brutality with ravishing rick selling majestically for the powerhouse assault rude gamely withstood the abuse long enough to target attack on his opponent's lower back and slow the pace down to something resembling an actual wrestling match. A ref bump late on gave the champion his final advantage in the match and diffusing Warrior's first comeback with a vicious for the time pile driver gave him faint hope of retaining the title. Genuinely in control, Rude got arrogant, allowing himself to be distracted by Rowdy Roddy Piper. He took one final massive bump off a Warrior German suplex. He was decimated with the usual finishing flurry in the aftermath, with the exhausted warrior looking a devastating force as he regained his coveted title. Number 6. Bret Hart vs Davey Boy Smith the SummerSlam 92 main event between the British Bulldog and Bret Hart is inarguably the most famous WWE match ever to take place outside of the United States. Though the entire main event was built around his home country crowning, Bulldog was, let's just say, ill-prepared for the moment. According to Hart's detailed memoirs, a nervous Davy boy had spent the week before smoking crack with Jim Neidhart and was mentally and physically wrecked almost immediately after the bell rang. On rewatch, it's apparent how drained the Bulldog is within the first few minutes. Brett asserts that he had to remind his brother-in-law of everything they discussed for the contest, carefully babying him through each individual step in front of the biggest crowd the two would ever perform in front of. The Hitman calls it his favorite ever match for this reason alone, with the work of pro wrestling never more emphasized 
than in this miraculous display. Number five, Triple H with Ric Flair versus Kevin Nash with Shawn Michaels. Triple H and Kevin Nash, sorry Michael Hamlet, had a host of woeful matches in 2003, but the one anomaly came at the UK only pay-per-view Insurrection. Sandwiched between the abysmal pay-per-view main events at Judgment Day and the first ever Raw only pay-per-view, Bad Blood. Bookending another useless go around between the click buddies, Michaels and Flair literally bled, sweat and paid the price by leathering the life out of one another to ensure fans didn't leave early to beat the traffic. Mere minutes into the match, Ric Flair interfered, triggering a frantic ringside brawl with HBK that left the Nature Boys blonde mop doused in claret. The war waged in and out of the ring as a distraction for the desperately boring world title match taking place concurrently, making the whole thing feel more like a tornado tag war. Referees eventually separated the duo, but a bloody and battered flair would return later in the contest, triggering a second scuffle with Michaels that again offered more in 20 seconds that the Avengers could do in 20 minutes. In the chaos of the final battle, Triple H hit Kevin Nash with a sledgehammer, of course, and covered him for the win. It was 2003, after all. Number four, Macho Man Randy Savage versus Ultimate Warrior. Warrior stole the show for the second consecutive WrestleMania in an effort with Randy Savage that dwarfed the remarkable title versus title match with the Hulkster the prior year. Preparing for his first extended break in years, Macho Man Randy Savage was world class in his efforts to propel Warrior to mythical heights as victor of their WrestleMania 7 retirement match. Savage bumped and bounced like a pinball for every Warrior strike and even permitted booking that saw his opponent kick out after five consecutive flying elbow finishes. Exquisitely playing dead as Warrior smashed him with repeated flying tackles, Macho Man wasn't just defeated, he was destroyed. Number three, Bam Bam Bigelow versus Lawrence Taylor. Bam Bam Bigelow's deft elevation of Lawrence Taylor's limited offense came the, with the additional pressure of main eventing a WrestleMania. With a decorated NFL career to support his domineering physical presence, Taylor required a large opponent to make the contest aesthetically believable. But Bigelow went beyond the call of duty in selling LT's repeated forearm strikes. Bam Bam's pacing throughout the 11-minute contest aided a physically dilapidated Taylor, with the former New York's linebacker looking wrecked in the early stages of the contest. Bumping from moves he missed rather than requiring Taylor to actually do too much to create drama, Bigelow also employed his trademark pace in keeping the action moving while Taylor grabbed a valuable breather. The story thus became one of wrestler's arrogance versus footballer's will to win. Bigelow's gradual frustration at his inability to beat Taylor was his ultimate undoing as complaints with a final near fall gave rise to an LT comeback. With Bigelow rattled, Taylor hit more forearms and then landed a huge one from the second rope for the win. It was a selfless and committed display and earned the tattooed flyer his biggest ever payday. Number two, John Cena versus the Great Carly. The Great Carly, despite what appears to legitimately be his very best efforts, may be the worst wrestler in WWE history. And yet, because of his natural size and being a plug into an enormous Indian market WWE has long been trying to penetrate, his presence brought great value to the organization. This was especially true during his brief spells at the top of the card, with matches over the years against The Undertaker, Batista, Triple H, and especially Cena, carefully protecting his fearsome aura. A Falls Count Anywhere sequel to their, let's just admit it, uninteresting clash a month prior marked a turning point for both. Long desperate for acceptance as a headline act himself, Cena wore every sports entertainment hat in an effort to make the match something special. Bumping like he had never done before, Cena sold and sold and sold, with Carly wearing the champ down with his punches, stomps, and at one point, even a spinning back kick. Fancy. The climactic finish saw the champ hurl his champion off the stage with an enormous FU. It was a career best effort from Carly himself, but required Cena's cinematic giant slaying performance to really sell the story. Number one, Bret Hart versus Tom McGee. It just had to be, didn't it? For 33 years, it was the ultimate best kept secret by the company until the hitman's exceptional efforts were given a fairy tale ending. 
Consider the successor to Hulk Hogan, despite the fact that Hulkamania was still running wild by just about every conceivable metric in 1986. McMahon was enamored with Tom McGee, thanks to his Hollywood looks, incredible physique, and in-ring abilities presumably good enough, thanks to spells in Stampede Wrestling and All Japan. It was Stu Hart that recommended McGee to Vince, and Hart's son Brett gave the muscular youngster the match of a lifetime in front of his new boss. In a match held during October 1986's television tapings in Rochester, New York, the excellence of execution gave McGee a scuffle so spectacular, he later wrote that Vince loudly trumpeted to the starlet as his next champion as the pair got backstage. Only in 2019 was the fan base able to see it too. Follow-up contest exposed McGee as, sorry mate, an abysmal wrestler that failed to emote in the ring or on the microphone, while Hart toiled in the tag division, awaiting a spotlight of his own. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Let us know in the comment section below and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And subscribe to What Culture Wrestling wherever you get your podcasts from for daily wrestling podcasts. Thanks for watching. I've been Adam from What Culture and I'll see you soon.